And now, live from the studios of Freedoms Phoenix, Ernest Hancock. It has been said that when in the course of human events, an oppression so revolts its subjects that it becomes necessary to alter or abolish the means of that tyranny. Is it that time when our Bill of Rights is defiled every day? When our adventures abroad threaten our security at home? When the Federal Reserve keeps our free nation enslaved by debt? When the people of the world tremble under the thumb of corporate imperialism? And now, our nation is drifting dangerously from freedom to fascism. So I have to ask, is it time? Oh, is it time? You know, this is what happened. Adam uh, had that speech ready. He had practiced it. He was ready. He's going to bring down the house, and he knew it. I knew it. It ran late. And uh, Dr. Paul, they wanted to, you know, give him enough time to speak and play and all this kind of a lot of behind the scenes stuff going on as uh, MC and they wanted me to cut Adam's speech. And I'm like, that's not going to happen. You know, well, they, you know, the security guys and, you know, and I, yeah, and Will and whatever. And I, you know, look, I, we'll work it out. So Chuck Baldwin was very kind. He agreed to cut his speech short in exchange for he kind of lingered up on the stage and Dr. Paul would come up, be the next speaker, and they get a picture shaking hands and being that made him happy. So, you know, Chuck was a really good guy about this. I explained to him what was going on. So he, he benefited from it later on. Of course, we, you know, uh, every Sunday, my wife's in there with some friends and, you know, I go and visit and we watch the uh uh, sermon every Sunday of Chuck Baldwin. And he's in, you know, he's already done three episodes of Romans 13. It don't mean what they say it means kind of thing. You know, got to respect the authority of bad guys, you know, so I suggest you do that. We'll, we'll take that whole thing. We'll put up on Freedoms Phoenix. We'll do that. What happened is he was willing to do that so Adam could give his presentation. He went up and had some Iraq veterans against the war behind him holding up banners and so on. And It was very hot. So people were in, not really on the lawn out in front. They were under trees in the shade and so on. So what he did is uh, once he started speaking, doing this, it crowded around the stage. I mean, he got them pumped up. It was a great speech. It's like 10 minutes. It was so inspiring and set the tone for Chuck Baldwin, then Ron Paul. It was the highlight of, of a great, a great presentation all day. From that moment on, I knew what was going to happen. And I encouraged him. Adam and I became friends over the years. And I just said, you know, the only suggestion that I have, I've been through this before. There's always been cycles of, you know, people that, you know, jump the prominence and come to the attention of, you know, important people. And they they always, they squeeze your bicep, of which he has, you know, substantial biceps. They go up there and they go, ooh, you're so purdy. You know, we, we, we want to help you out. We're going to get you a staff. And, you know, what do you want to do? We could do it this way. Say this, do that. He was so strong philosophically that he didn't really have to worry. Now, he went back to Santa Fe, where he was from, in New Mexico, and he decided to run as a Republican for Congress. He had the support of Dr. Paul, had a lot of the activists in support of him, but there was a a whole lot of people that saw his star was rising, and they want to be part of La Machine. We're going to make money. We're going to use you to raise funds. We're going to do another Ron Paul thing. We're going to have money bombs. We're going to, ooh, we're all going to have a salary. Well, of course, you have to have a campaign and you do, you know, what you got to do. But, you know, the big criticism a lot of people had of Adam is he wasn't compromising. You know, you, you're going to have to get the, the blue hair Republicans to come out and support you. And you can't say scary stuff like, and what about, you know, a drug issue? And what about war? And what about you got to soften this and everything? Adam wouldn't do it. And to whatever degree that, you know, people claim that he did, I didn't know about it. You know, I'm just like, I, I thought I was doing pretty good. So what we did here in Phoenix is we made the Kokesh signs. Enjoy Kokesh. It was like a Coca-Cola sign. So we knew that would just launch him just by, you know, getting name recognition. So we went up to Santa Fe. I told him, I said, you do this. And this is like a year before. You do this and the Phoenix Revolution will go to Santa Fe and help you launch your campaign to make sure that you get attention. Because that's what we do. Cool. Done. You get two 
one week stance. When you want to do it, you just let me know. It's up to you. You just give me enough notice and we'll prepare something. We'll get the workshop all going and we'll just, you know, go work with your volunteers. Don't want to have nothing to do with your campaign. Don't want to play the same thing with the Ron Paul thing. I don't want to have nothing to do with filling out forms or campaign or any of that crap. I do it because I want to and you just tell me what volunteers are out there and want to play. So we went there and we put these signs up everywhere. I mean, Santa Fe's not that big town anyway. So <clears throat> they were saturated. Well, it sparked, you know, the campaign in the course of whatever he had, and he got a lot of recognition, and, you know, he had a good campaign. Now, of course, they did the same kind of, you know, Dixie Chicken thing that they did to Ron Paul and him and so on, but, you know, he got the message out. Well, that gave him a platform by which he could uh, garner enough support that he had his own radio show in Albuquerque, New Mexico, called Adam vs. the Man. Well, he, you know, more of the same, does a great job, had some IT skills, you know, a lot of people that had some uh, talents and so on, working with him, doing that. During all of this, he had always been a great spokesman and activist for the cause. During the Republican National Convention, while we had the rally to restore uh, liberty and uh, restore the republic thing, that was Dr. Paul's deal in Minneapolis-St. Paul, that was a parallel convention along with the Republican National uh, Convention that they had. And, and the one that we had was a lot better. We had a lot more fun. And we put signs up everywhere. We're just being all kinds of buttheads. Adam spoke there. He got introduced to a lot of people. And... He got in, had tickets, got into the Republican National Convention and on national television had signs against McCain. And they were trying to get him down and pull him. And that's when they start chanting there, USA, USA, you know, that kind of crap. Well, he got a lot of attention for that. I mean, there's a guy that, you know, he was, you know, and he's texting me. He's going, well, I was going to this, I'm going to that. Here I go, you know, come bail me out, whatever. And, you know, we're just keeping track on promoting on Freedoms Phoenix, Gary Franchi, Restore the Republic. We're all making sure that, you know, at least um, he didn't wind up in Guantanamo and nobody knew about it. So this really elevated him as someone, a Marine, that was in Iraq, Fallujah no less, that came back disillusioned and was articulate against this empire. So then he gets contacted a few months ago by Russia today, which now they drop the Russia, they just call it RT. Now, I'm going to give you a little history when we come back in the next segment on RT when it came in December of 05. Now, keep in mind, the United States had what was called Voice of America that was penetrating into the Eastern Bloc countries. You know, I, I graduated high school in 79, right in the middle of all this stuff. I, you know, I, that's all we hear about and how we're great and wonderful and whatever. And, of course, they say, you imperialist dog. You know, what the heck does that mean? What's an imperialist? You know, imperialist dog, I guess, is you know, bad imperialist or a good imperialist, whatever depends on your opinion. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. What does that mean? How are we perceived by the rest of the world? Well, of course, we put our best foot forward. What do we do? Hey, man, we got blue jeans and the Beatles. You know, we're, we're driving around new Cadillacs. You know, we're, uh, you know, what's up with y'all? It's so interesting that now, decades later, you have the Russian government, for just little bitty baby money, are sponsoring a network that is <laughs> giving all the news and commentary of a young demographic that's given the libertarian, freedom-oriented Ron Paul on there all the time, Max Kaiser, Peter Schiff, a lot of the names that you know, on there all the time on a Russian-sponsored network. Would you feel better if it was sponsored by the United States federal government? See my point? So the question was, Adam's like, look, man, I, you know, he did a, they had him come on to talk about some issue and they, they had him on before in the past and they were saying, you know, wow, man, we need to talk to this boy. So they made him an offer and said, we'd like to talk to you about doing a daily prime time going up against John Stewart from the daily show that has access to 20 million cable boxes just in the United States. Are you interested? You're interested. Tell you what happened, where it's going, and what we're doing about it. Oh, what the bad guys must be thinking. It just broke. Yesterday we recorded an interview with Adam. Got all the details. We've got links on today's archive to that. We'll be right back. Hey, all behind the scene news.